Here we are at example four from our 2.4 number one set of notes. But before we dive into this example, we're gonna look at something that's known as point slope form. Point slope form is simply the equation y minus y1, which is equal to m times x minus x1. And though there are different y's and, and x's going on here, our x1, y1 is simply a point And our m is obviously our slope. Now, with this other x and y, we're actually going to leave those as arbitrary x and y's. Again, because when you're talking about an equation of a line, that means that you can plug in several different x's um, and end up with various different y values. And that, again, is what creates then that line. But this x1, y1 is a specific point that we know and again, m is, again, just slope. So you can actually use point-slope form. Any time that you just have a point and a slope, you can find the equation of that line. So that's actually going to help us out when we're looking at example 4, where we're asked to write the equation of a line that's perpendicular to this line, and it passes through this other point. Well, if we're looking to write an equation of a line, we have to have two things, the slope and a point, in this case for point slope, if that's what we're going to use. So we have 2x plus 3y is equal to 4. Let's go ahead and find the slope of this thing. When we're trying to find the slope of this, we have to put things into y is equal to mx plus b. So we're going to do that by subtracting 2x from both sides. We then end up with just 3y is equal to negative 2x plus 4 dividing both sides by 3 to get y by himself. We end up with y is equal to negative 2 thirds x plus 4 thirds. And when we're looking at the equation that is perpendicular with this line, now keep in mind, this line is the same thing as this line. We've just put it in y equals mx plus b form. That's the only difference. Uh, we, are, we had to actually put in y equals mx plus b form, though, just so that we could find and use the slope of this guy. So we have m is equal to negative 2 thirds. Now, when we're talking about a line being perpendicular, we know that from our previous notes, from our 2.2, 2.3 set of notes, that we have to find the opposite reciprocal, and then that would give us the perpendicular slope. So the opposite of two thirds comes out to be, or I'm sorry, the opposite of negative two thirds comes out to be positive two thirds. For the reciprocal, that's pretty much again just your flip of your fraction. Well, that will come out to be 3 on top and 2 on the bottom. So again, we're just literally flipping those numbers. So this is the slope, 3 halves, is what we're actually going to use for our slope that passes, or yes, that passes through this point and is an equation that is perpendicular with this other equation. So kind of graphically, what's going on here? And again, this is just going to be a very, very rough sketch. Is we have this line 2x plus 3y is equal to 4. Let's just say he looks like this. Now we have this slope that we've already found what he is. It's 3 halves. And it is perpendicular to this other line. Now here's the real trick though it has to pass through this other point to zero. Well, let's just say for a moment that two happens to be right here. And as a result, we're trying to find then what is the equation of our line such that it is in fact perpendicular, because if I move this anywhere, it should be in fact perpendicular, creating that 90 degrees. But it also has to pass through this specific point to zero. And as a result, there is a specific line with the same slope, 3 halves, it's not changing, but it has a specific y-intercept that we need. All right, so there is, an, there is a specific line that would satisfy uh, both of these conditions and passes through that point two zero. 
Now, let's go ahead and use our point slope. We know that we have y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1. By the way, point slope is just another way that we can use to write the equation of a line. You could use slope intercept form. You could also use point slope. Point slope, though, actually does have its benefits, and we'll talk about that more near the end of the video. Again, though, we have our point 2, 0. This is actually our x1 and y1 that we're going to throw into our equation. So this first y, we're going to leave him alone. He's at that arbitrary y. Minus our y1. Well, y1 from our point came out to be 0. Equals our slope m. This is what we're going to use for that perpendicular. 3 halves. Times this x is our arbitrary x. So we're going to leave him as just a regular x. Minus our x1. Again, from our point that it has to satisfy, we're throwing 2 into that coming from right here. Now just simplifying things up, we end up with y minus 0 is equal to 3 halves times x minus 2. So really, when you have y and you subtract nothing from him, he's still just y by himself on the left side. Going ahead and distributing in this 3 halves, we end up with 3 halves x minus um, 3 halves times negative 2 just comes out to be negative 3. And there is our equation of the line. So now let's go ahead and talk about some of the benefits with maybe like point slope as opposed to the slope intercept. Well with point slope form, you just go ahead and throw in your x and y, as long as you also know your slope, m. You just pretty much throw those values in there and simplify. Yeah, you might have to do a distribution, you might have to add this over, but it's pretty much done. Whereas if we're looking at the slope intercept form, we had to actually go ahead and plug in our values, find this b, and then after we found b, we had to actually go ahead and rewrite the equation of the line. Whereas point slope, you're literally done at the end. You don't have to rewrite anything. So that's kind of the bonus with the point slope. Again, though, that is example four from our 2.4 number one set of notes.